Hi, welcome to this uh, module again it is uh, on the red craniotomy and we are looking at the MEA right this is video number 2. In the last video 1 you have seen right uh, if you recall you have seen what you have seen how the NSSI is done locally NSSI is done and how we are looking at the uh, craniotomy right and how we can see different regions right. Uh, I hope it gets more and more interesting over it uh, over a period of time. Uh, the uh, brain surgery is the most difficult surgery uh, compared to uh, other surgeries. I am not saying other surgeries are not complicated and in fact, I, I have no, no right to say uh, which surgery is better, which surgery is complicated. But in general, uh, because I have seen the way the brain surgery is done, it is it's really, really uh, trickier. Okay. But that does not mean that heart surgery is easier or a liver transplant is easier right everything requires a skill set. Brain is something which is really unknown right whether you talk about the degenerative diseases, uh, whether you talk about uh, curing Parkinson's, whether you talk about how the uh, memory and attention uh, degrades as, uh, uh, as you grow old right particularly for geriatric patients. Uh, you talk about epilepsy, uh, you, you talk about the epilepsy and then uh, the, the sleep disorderness like you cannot clap, get well uh, good sleep, then uh, different waves that are generated during the sleep time uh, whether it is alpha, beta, uh, gamma uh, and then so, so the theta right. So, and what are REM cycles, uh, what is a dream phase. Uh, so, it is it is really mesmerizing right because we do not know uh, until we do not know in detail each and everything about brain it will still remain uh, a area of exploration right. Uh, if you if you have recently understood how we can use digital VLSI right uh, to an extent an analog VLSI or, or mixed signal uh, to develop this neuromorphic chip right. So, neuromorphic chip is very interesting concept of using your VLSI uh, and to develop a chip that can mimic a part of the brain ok, a part of the brain. Same thing goes for the olfaction right if olfaction is smelling when you smell what happens which part of the brain get actually activated memory where exactly the memory is stored how it is stored, how it is uh, you know uh, we can always we, you can think about when you were in fourth fifth grade and you can still have that memories right. So, it is it is an amazing amazing uh, amazing amazing organ you can say or, or a part right that is still unknown for all of us to explore. Now, when I say unknown does not mean that we do not know the anatomy we know, but why things happens, how the decoding happens right, how can you encode it back. Uh, can you replace certain part of the brain with a coprocessors right. Suppose, if you have the brain right and certain part of the brain which are non eloquent areas if those areas are been surgically removed can you replace those area by a chip. Not to not to make a person a superhuman, just to regain what he or she was that skills right that motor area the visual the speech the memory anything that has been affected can you regain it right uh, that will be a very interesting uh, concept. However, we come back and uh, see the video number 2 and in video number 2 what we will be uh, discussing would be uh, following things. We will show you the once your craniotomy is done that you know right how the skull is removed. Then there is very thin layer which is called dura, how the incision in the dura is made, understanding how the localization of the region happens by using wire electrodes. Then we implant the micro electrode array after confirming the localization of the target area. 
then we show you the drilling ground for ground and reference electrodes because when you implant the uh, micro electrode array you need to also see which one will be my ground electrode which one will be my recording electrode which one will be my reference electrodes. So, what you can do for ground for reference how will do how will uh, how will perform the drilling. Next is how you can fix the printed circuit board that is a electronic module uh, uh, with the uh, stitching uh, so that the the for arresting the moment but that means that if the uh, red moves the whole electronics should not move right because it will generate a lot of noise. Uh, of course, red, red moves electronics goes with it. So, like a backpack, but how well you can attach the backpack to the red's, red's back right is a uh, is also a, a a matter of importance because removing any shocks while the rat is walking or any other activity right is very important and that is why the fixing of PCB is really important ok. So, uh, this five different points we will be looking at the in the video uh, next one, uh, but let me just uh, show it to you how we are going to implant this uh, electrodes and where exactly we do the implant. So, we will still stick to something that we have been uh, uh, looking at in the uh, electrical simulation uh, MEAU for electrical simulation. So, in this case uh, if you see uh, these are the micro electrode array and how many numbers you can see there are 5 numbers. Right. If you if you zoom in, here is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 5 electrodes are there, these are your recording electrodes. So, everything else has an insulating over it except the contact area and except this circles that you can see 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, there there is no insulating material, all the other regions has the insulating material. So, that when this uh, this region touches the uh, brain surface right or in fact or any region like this also here also that will not have any effect on on those electrodes because this is covered like by a insulating layer. Only the electrodes that are touching the brain surface which are your recording electrodes right uh, will be able to capture the signal from the brain and the contact electrode will help us to uh, uh, connect it to the further electronics module. So, that is how it is now the uh, way to place this thing inside the brain after you do the craniotomy and then you open the dura is in this region 1 and in second region is here to 2 alright. So, require how many electrodes now you require 2 numbers of these devices 1 5 electrodes on one side and another 5 electrodes on the other side. So, now you can do the surface stimulation you can see subset thickness about 20 microns extremely thin I have told you during the one of the class that the human hair is about 50 to 60 microns 50 to 80 microns um, we are talking about 20 microns that, that, that means that half of the human hair even lesser than the thickness half of the thickness of human hair that is how thin the devices are that can be placed onto the cortical surface the substrate material right the substrate is any material on which you are going to fabricate a device substrate material is your polyamide. Uh, the electrode material electrode material is this blue color thing that you can see here I am sure that it is blue color here right 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 this material is nothing but titanium and gold titanium is used to improve the addition of the gold on the polymer which polymer is there it is the polyamide right. So, now you have the electro diameter what is the electro diameter the electro diameter is about 400 microns that means that if you take this one circle one circle is close to 400 microns. What is the line width uh, for interconnected line width this line width this one ok this this wavy line that you can see in red color right this line width is about 25 microns electro diameter is 400 microns line width is 25 microns and thickness of 
the titanium and gold what is the thickness gold is about 300 nanometer and titanium is, is about 30 nanometer all right so these are some of the parameters that we have used to fabricate the uh, surface neural implant we also called as the sni right for cortical surface stimulation and recording uh, again for recording uh, this can be easily used for stimulation you need to understand what kind of materials you need to use so that the stimulation is uh, proper the the reason of using polyamide is that uh, it has an excellent biocompatibility and adaptability to mems based fabrication process uh, second is that every rector can support up to 1.25 or 1.25 milliampere of current when gold electrodes are electropolymerized with p dot pss so you see that only gold will not have that much of capabilities but if you go for the electropolymerization then you can uh, go and apply around 1.25 milliampere of current from each electrode so this sni which we call as a surface neural implant is placed on the left and right motor uh, cortex here right just between the primary and secondary uh, we we put this uh, implant and left and right motor cortex regions of red's brain for the particular study so now when you see right there are different way of implanting we have we can use either this one or you have a chip or you have a flexible device with 32 electrodes there were one when we look at epilepsy right we are looking at there are some uh, uh, flexible uh, devices uh, which were having 32 electrodes right. So, if I just do like this then you have 32 electrodes and this 32 electrodes will be touching the brain of the tissue. So, it is also micro electrode array the with 32 electrodes here we have used only 5 uh, because of the region of interest right and region of interest is you can see very clearly it is very very small right here about 3 millimeter this length is 8 millimeter and you have to place the device right in in this circle okay that is how the size of the device is also uh, uh, measured you have about uh, 3.1 uh, or 3090 uh, <coughs> microns which is about 3 millimeter <coughs> close to 3.090 millimeter if you want to be precise this length is about uh, 5.492 millimeter uh, this one is 1.950 millimeter and each electrolyzer as I told you is about uh, 400 microns in diameter. Great. So, what you will see uh, in this particular thing in this particular thing you will look at uh, how the uh, how the incision of the dura will be there you will look at where is the localization of the region is made then you will see how the implantation of the MEA is done MEA can be anything like I said it can be 32 electrodes it can be a, a array of electrodes with a single needle or it can be your uh, flexible uh, uh, device uh, or implant made using polyamide which is the 5 electrodes one it can be anything right. So, how it can be done uh, then we will look at the drilling and ground as I have told you at the start and finally, we will look at the fixing of PCB and is teaching and other things ok. So, uh, during this time we can also look at the characterization, uh, characterization of the electrodes are very important. Uh, so, if you see this particular slide uh, now what we have seen. So, since see this slide is there right I will be anyway I have talked about this uh, uh, in my uh, in one of the class, but, but I will also teach you again right. So, you have here the uh, silicon wafer and on silicon wafer you have your polymic acid solution which is spin coated as you can see from here right uh, and then you have uh, you, you can cure it and then on that you can uh, deposit titanium and gold using your electron beam operation electron beam operation is nothing but your physical vapor deposition uh, using one mask followed by wet edge of a uti so you can get what you want which is this particular uh, design right followed by uh, spin coating of again the same polyamic acid uh, solution followed by curing which you can see in D right and then uh, lithography using mass 2 hard baking followed by dry H of PI using plasma etcher why because you need to open the uh, 
the contact pads right and the in the region of our interest which is the electrodes. Uh, and then finally, the device are carefully cut and separated from silicon wafer using a surgical plate. Once the device is there, we can do the, uh, st the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy study and from that we can understand what is the average impedance uh, of the electrodes which we found it, it is about 25.8 kilo ohms at 1 uh, kilo ohms at 1 kilo ohms which falls with the literature that is available with us. Now, when I Vithas events is available uh, on, on the different uh, platforms. So, uh, we have here uh, Z 1 to Z 5 that means impedance from one electrode, impedance from elect electrode second, third, fourth and fifth and only average it out is close to 25.8 kilo ohms. This is an actual device uh, again we have used 1 cent because the diameter of that 1 cent is constant. Um, it is not for any other purposes okay. and I will tell you a very uh, you know interesting story uh, regarding this using one cent is that I have my postdoc from uh, Maryland College Park and also a one year postdoc or you can say a fellowship from Harvard Medical School which is in Boston, uh, University of Maryland College Park also is in US. And when I joined and I started using 1 cent and uh, placing the device next to it, then the question was that oh why do not you use Indian rupee right, why you want to use uh, American cent right. You are in India now right, that was the uh, comment you can say or advice right that was given to me. Now guys, is nothing to do with the currency okay. <laughs> if you see our rupee right, you take the rupee and you see over a period of time, we keep on changing the diameter. Now the rupee that I have, it looks similar to like 50 paisa that I used to have earlier right. You, I do not know how many of you have even seen 50 paisa okay, but the point is the we do not have a constant diameter of our currency right, the coins are not constant. There are several reasons why it is not constant, let us not go into the, the finances. The reason of using the coin is to show you the device size, that is it right. So, if we put 1 cent, it is same diameter from, from years. So, it is easy to understand the device dimension compared to 1 cent, then that was the only reason why we are still using uh, the uh, cent just to show you the diameter, so that you can understand that how small your device can be. But sometimes a uh, lot of us right may not have seen cent actually, so we will not know and that is why I also have a scale bar here. Right, I also have a scale bar here. So, when you zoom this much area right just this much area and you put this device as you can see here right and the what is the size, the so size is close to like this with a, with a scale bar right. So, the point that I am making is that sometimes uh, we need to uh, we need to make sure that what are we representing and how well we are representing our device. So, for people who understand uh, what is the diameter of 1 cent, for them it is easier to look at the cent and see oh, oh this device is really tiny. For people who may not understand, we can always show with a scale bar right, so or a, or a uh, ruler, so whatever is easier. Yeah, so so let us see how in this video, right? All these things, and then uh, we will we will go to the next video, uh, which will be a little bit further about once you do the cranetomy and once you implant the device, how you are going to say seal the brain of the rat. All right, so I'll I'll stop here. Quickly, we'll move to next video uh, as a as a as a part of this module, and that will be video number three. Uh, I'll see in the next video. Till then, you take care.